This tiny dot is the pineal gland. It's roughly the size of a grain of rice and it's known for being the smallest gland in our body. But it's also known for another reason. Sleep. When it's time to go to sleep, the pineal gland produces melatonin. That's our sleepy hormone. And our body is trained to produce more melatonin at night to help us get to sleep. But experts are concerned that there's something messing with our melatonin levels and it could be destroying our sleep. Something that's everywhere. The blue light danger to you with your cell phone. From yeah. our phones and computers to our lights, we are constantly bombarded with blue light. Healthy was causing cancer. We're talking blue These light, which smartphones have a lot of it. Research shows blue light can throw off the body's biological clock, potentially wreaking havoc on your sleep pattern. Okay, let's talk about light. This is the electromagnetic spectrum. You've seen it before. Literally here, where visible light is. The light everyone is concerned about is specifically high energy visible light, or otherwise known as the color blue. So without getting into the complicated physics, the thing to remember is that there's an inverse relationship between the wavelength of a light ray and the amount of energy it contains. So light rays with a longer wavelength are lower in energy, but blue light has a relatively short wavelength, so it's considered high in energy. From an evolutionary perspective, humans evolved to be awake during the day because it was advantageous for our survival. And so as a result, our body has adapted to wake us up in the morning and get sleepy at night. This is known as our circadian rhythm. It's our internal biological clock that not only controls sleepiness, but literally everything that we do. The average person's circadian rhythm looks a little bit like this. In the morning, our body releases cortisol. We stop producing melatonin and our blood pressure rises. Altogether, this wakes us up and it has a knock-on effect to get us ready for our day. So first our intestines begin to move, otherwise known as your morning poo. And at around 11 a.m. our body's at its peak alertness. There's a small gap where nothing really happens. So you might know this is your midday, mid-afternoon slump. But then our body has another cortisol spike, which helps us push through the day. In the evening, melatonin starts being produced, which helps us get into deep sleep. And then after that, the cycle repeats itself again in the morning. So it makes sense. For thousands of years, the main and only source of blue light was from the sun. And so considering blue light is most intense when the sun is highest in the sky and our bodies wanted to be awake during the day and asleep at night, it made sense for our body to become naturally sensitive to blue light as an indicator for controlling our circadian rhythm. Let's take a look at how. If I were to slice your eye in half, this is what it would look like. Light enters through the pupil and is focused on the retina at the back of the eye. Information is then sent to our brain so ultimately we can see what's in front of us. If we zoomed into the retina, we have rod cells that help us see in low resolution in the dark, and we have three different types of cone cells that help us see specific colors when there's light. But we also have some light sensitive cells that don't contribute in helping us see, but instead detect light for our circadian rhythm. These cells have the catchy name intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, and they contain the photopigment melanopsin, which is specifically sensitive to blue light. When these cells detect blue light, they send signals to a region of the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is basically our body's own master clock. In short, it will then send signals to the pineal gland and say, hey, it's daytime, stop producing melatonin, and send signals to our adrenal glands and say, hey, wake up, start producing some cortisol. It's a really clever system and it's taken our body thousands of years to fine tune and develop. But there's now a problem. The sun is no longer our only source of blue light. And this is seriously messing with our body's internal clock. Most of the light from digital devices and LEDs have a wavelength between 400 and 490 nanometers. So in other words, they emit a lot of blue light. And this wouldn't really be a problem if people only use their devices in the daytime. But its use at night is sending our circadian rhythm haywire. In a recent study, 89.2% of Americans admitted to using a screen before going to bed. And only now are we beginning to see some of the negative health effects this has. Blue light exposure at night suppresses the production of melatonin and completely shifts our circadian rhythm out of sync. One study found that in individuals that read from an LED ebook, so a tablet or Kindle, their evening levels of melatonin were suppressed by around 50% in comparison to those that just read from a normal book. So what does this mean for our sleep? Well, a review from 2019 highlighted that smartphone use before bed was associated with a whole load of different sleep problems. 
And from an objective point of view, another study found that exposure to blue light before bed led to decreased slow wave activity in the brain, and hence a shallower sleep. And so what does this mean for our health? Well, there's been tons of headlines that suggest blue light can cause cancer. So can it? Well, not quite. I want to preface this by saying outright that blue light doesn't cause cancer. But if you're someone that is consistently exposed to blue light at night, and as a result, you are constantly getting poorer sleep or less sleep, then there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this lack of sleep could be putting you at risk of certain conditions, including cancer. Sleep loss has been associated with obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, low mood and anxiety, as well as also cancer. So it's pretty established that you need your sleep. So what can you do to get better sleep? Well, there's been tons of people advocating the use of blue light blocking glasses, but are they actually useful? I'll give you three free or relatively cheap biohacks. It's number one, get a pair of blue light blocking glasses. If I'm watching a movie with friends, I'll put on a pair of blue light blocking glasses. Blue light glasses, dumb or actually smart? Well, to answer Marquez's question, for the vast majority of people, they are actually quite dumb. This is because yes, whilst being exposed to blue light in the evening can trick our brain into thinking it's daytime, hence disrupting our circadian rhythm. Being exposed to blue light in the morning and during the day has been proven to enhance alertness, elevate mood and improve cognitive performance. So instead of walking around wearing funky blue blocking glasses and looking a bit stupid, here are some things that you can try to actually get better sleep. Firstly, in an ideal world, try and turn off devices around one hour before bed. But I know this isn't realistic and if you're anything like my editor who likes his pre-bed Instagram scroll, then simply dimming the brightness and setting your displays to a warmer tone makes a huge difference. One study found that simply by decreasing the brightness of a device, it significantly reduced the amount of blue light that that device emitted. Additionally, some other good sleep practices include going to bed and waking up at the same time every day staying away from coffee and other caffeinated drinks past 3 p.m. and also in the evening just dimming light bulbs in the bedroom. Some people suggest taking melatonin tablets but unfortunately the evidence around taking them is not very strong. Ultimately we all need our beauty sleep so prioritize it. Make sure you're getting your seven to nine hours in every day. The stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said that the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts but I'd perhaps change this and say it actually depends on the quality of your sleep. If you're struggling with sleep, then please seek advice from a registered health professional. I've also linked some additional reputable resources of things to try, as well as all the references that went into making this video in the description below. My name's Esh, and I'm a recently graduated medical doctor who's taking a video journalistic approach to exploring the future of science, health, and tech. You can check out my latest video where I dissected the science and delve into why Ozempic is not a miracle weight loss drug. Until next time, and please subscribe to the channel.